Hello everyone. Welcome to Classmate Academy. See, today we are going to discuss about Indian dances. So in this, we are going to discuss regarding dances of various states. So first I'm starting with this Andhra Pradesh, Indian dances. So here we are going to discuss about uh, classical dances as well as folk dances. Okay. So these dances are very, very important for those who are writing SSCGL, obviously. So any exam related to the Staff Solution Commission as well as RRB and TPC. So if you come to Andhra Pradesh, the first classical dance that you can see in Andhra Pradesh that is called as Kuchipudi dance. See, Kuchipudi is the name of a place in Krishna district. So in Krishna district, there is a village by name called as Kuchipudi. Okay. So here there is a person by name called as Siddhendra Yogi. So very, very important person. And remember, Siddhendra Yogi is a Vaishnava saint. So one fine day, the Krishna will appear in the dreams of Siddhendra Yogi and asks Siddhendra Yogi to perform a dance drama regarding the regarding his wife called as uh, Bama, Satya Bama. So based upon that, Siddhendra Yogi tried to perform okay, this drama dance. So whatever the villagers, so if you take that village, that is Kuchpudi village in Krishna district, so initially he used to, he asked the Brahmin boys to perform this dance. And later on, again, from there, you can see in the due course of time, there are many, many, many followers of Siddhendra Yogi who wrote various dramas and you can see various art forms were emerged within the Kuchpudi dance as well. As I said that Siddhendra Yogi belongs to the Vaishnava saint. So obviously this particular dance also contributed for the propagation of Bhakti movement in Andhra Pradesh as well. So Kuchipudi dance got the classical status as well. It is a classical dance. If you see this, the origin of this Kuchipudi dance, it is around 17th century. Actually, what happened? There is a king by, uh, uh, it's a Golconda Nawab by name called as Hassan Thani Shah. When he reached uh, the Kuchipudi village in Krishna district in the year 1675. So because the king came to that particular place, so they performed this Kuchipudi dance in front of uh, uh, Hassan. Tanisha. So he was very impressed with this dance. So when he impressed, so he want to develop this particular dance. So immediately he gave Agrahara. Okay. Uh, he gave one entire village for that Kuchipudi Agrahara. So that the entire maintenance and the development of the dance can take place by the revenue from that particular village as well. So even Golkhand Nawab, Hassan Tanisha also played a very crucial role in the development of this uh, dance as well. The beauty of this dance is, so you may ask that, what is the origin of this Kuchpuri dance? What might be? So if you take in Andhra Pradesh region, so the, from time being, there is a relation between the dance and drama together going on. In Andhra Pradesh, we call that as Ekshagana. So this Ekshagana later, uh, got one particular form and we are ca calling that as a Kuchipudi dance as well. So in this dance, you can see a slight movement of facial expressions. You can see a slight facial expressions can be seen and they can the movement of the body according to the dance. So there are various musical instruments according to the uh, tunes. So these persons is going to express their feelings because that is a dance with a drama. So obviously you have to express the feelings you have to in the dance form as well. Now here you can see this. Fast footwork can be seen, dramatic expressions and the storytelling. Because of drama, you can use the word storytelling as well. Okay. If you see this Kuchipudi dance, whatever the ornaments that you can see in this form, there is a wood by name called as Burugu wood. See, Burugu generally in Telugu also we use it like a light wood. It is very, very light wood. So by using this light wood, they are going to make the ornaments. See, whatever the ornaments that is made up of wood. So these ornaments will be uh, wear by these particular uh, dancers as well. In this, you can see most of the feminine expressions can be seen in this particular dance. Okay, so they can, you can see, I already said that they have to dance according to the music, okay, that were uh, played with the help of various instruments as well. And again, there are many types of uh, styles in this Kuchipudi dance as well. So that was developed in the 
after chidendra was passed away his followers wrote various dramas and accordingly various styles were emerged as well so in andhra pradesh there are famous personalities okay you can call them as legends in the kuchipudi dance as well out of this the first person is lakshmi narayana shastri this is very very important so remember the name chinta krishna murthy and also as well as uh, vedantam chinna satyam out of these three so vedantam chinna satyam is very very famous till today okay I had said that um, there is a person by name called as Lakshmi Narayana Shastri. Actually, he is the person who tried to introduce various elements uh, in this dance forms as well. So later, this dance started with the male members, and finally, now we can see both male and female, as well as female also can perform this dance as well. So this is about your Kuchipudi dance, Andhra Pradesh, very very important. Remember the point like Siddhendra Yogi, very very important, and the legends of this Kuchipudi dance as well. The next important dance is called as Bama Kalapam or Golla Kalapam. So the name Bhama talks about Satya Bhama, the wife of Krishna, and Kalpam means obviously it's a, it's kind of like a jealousy. So in this Bhama Kalapam, so directly this dance relates to the feminine movements in this dance as well that is called as Lasya. As I said, I remember this Bhama Kalapam is derived from Kuchipudi dance. So you can see almost all the elements of Kuchipudi dance in case of Bhama Kalapam as well. So you can see the image here. Performing Bama Kalapa Masu. Next one is Burrakata. So you can see this Burrakata is very, very, very common in the states of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. If you're coming here, three people will perform this particular uh, uh, dance. So in this case, there are two important ones. One is called as Katha. Katha means a story. Burra means you can see the instrument that person is carrying. So this instrument is called as Burra. So by playing these instruments, so they are going to say the story that is called as Burrakata. So it is simply oral storytelling technique that can be prevalent in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. So in these three persons, the main person that you can see at the center is going to tell the story. And the remaining two persons, you can see the various musical instruments in their hands as well. So as well as this person used to follow the main person in this particular storytelling. And remember, this Burrakata is very, very, very famous. So during festivals or any ceremonies, any ceremonies or any fairs. So you can see performance of Burrakata as well. So you can see this is a very, very common in Andhra Pradesh. So you can see this uh, Burrakata telling in, in various temples or in uh, public uh, gatherings also can be seen. So it can be performed in festivals, uh, religious gatherings. You take any religious gathering. There also you can see this kind of uh, performances or public uh, gathering also, you can see this. So this is a Burakata is very, very famous. It's just form of a storytelling. So when they are telling the story, obviously you can see a kind of dance movements also can be seen. So that is about your Burakata. Next one is Veera Natyam. So the name talks about everything. So Veera Natyam. So Natyam is nothing but dance. Again, Veera, so Veera is talks about uh, uh, Veera Badra. So Veera Badra is nothing but Veera, Veera Badra. So Veera Badra means those people who are the followers of uh, Lord Shiva, they used to follow a special type of dance. So in this case, you can see all the males only participate in this dance. All the males will participate in this particular dance. And mainly this dance is performed in Shiva temples and the worshippers of Shiva, they are called as Jangams. Jangams are nothing but worshippers of Shiva and mainly these dances are performed in the Shiva temples. If you see this particular dance, so these people used to wear a kind of plates from your hand to the elbow. Rings la untai. Then obviously they are going to hold one knife or instead you can, you can say big sword they are going to hold. And these people going to dance. Okay, you can see the manly expressions can be seen. And they can see the courage valor in their faces. Valor and courage can be seen in their faces. So obviously it's a type of uh, dance that is performed by the Shiva followers. And particularly the Virabhadra, those who worship uh, Virabhadra. So this is also very, very, very uh, common dance in case of Shiva temples as well. In Andhra Pradesh also, you can see this uh, dance is particularly famous in the East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh. There is a place called as Draksharamam. So even Draksharamam is having one of the famous Shiva temple as well. 
one of the aramas actually it's one of the aramas again later converted to the shiva temple also so this is a very uh, viranatyam is a very 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 famous uh, festival in andhra pradesh as well okay generally male also males only will perform as i said next one is dimsa dance remember this dimsa dance is a tribal dance okay this tribal dance is mainly performed in tribal dance okay tribes issue apologies and this dance is mainly performed in the araku region of andhra pradesh in andhra pradesh there is a very famous valley called as araku called as uti of andhra pradesh so in this place there are different uh, tribes that are living in this region the most famous tribe is valmiki tribe that lives in this region kotia tribe kon tribe bagata tribe so there are different types of tribes so these tribes will perform this called called as dimsa dance see not only in uh, andhra pradesh but also you can see dimsa dance in telangana as well mainly performed by the tribal women so generally around 15 to 20 women you can see holding their hands so they are holding their hands so once they hold the dance they are going to move in the circular direction according to the music so they have various uh, moves so accordingly they they are going to try to move in the circular fashion so obviously it's a kind of tribal dance and why they are performing this dance obviously as a, uh, as a form of celebration for them so it can be performed whenever they are very happy whenever they have a bumper harvest agriculture harvest they are going to perform this dance as well so we can say that it's kind of a harvest dance so people whenever they are happy they just perform this dance as well so in this generally all the people will participate in this dance but mainly we can see women participation is very 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 prominent in, in case of this particular dance as well. so remember dimsa dance in the northern coastal of andhra pradesh so the tribes in the araku region is going to perform this particular dance as well next one butta bommalu so here butta means see here what they are going to make you can see here a puppet you can see a very big puppet can be seen so here the people of this region particularly the west godavari districts of andhra pradesh they are going to make this butta okay bomma means uh, this toy you can see that is called as bomma butta means obviously you can see this uh, pepper that is made with a uh, uh, bamboo okay they will take bamboo bamboo and they are going to take a dry grass as well dry grass okay so with the help of this bamboo dry grass and everything they are going to make the puppets and they are very light in weight and inside the puppet it is hollow you can see inside the puppet it is very hollow so obviously now the people enters into this particular puppet so you can see very big appearance of this puppet can be seen okay so now they are going to perform this uh, dance okay so once they wear this particular puppet so there you can see that these people are using musical instruments so according to the according to the tunes of this um, music this people is go going to dance that is called as a butta bommalu that you can see in the west godavari district of andhra pradesh again it is also a folk dance it's no any kind of religious dance it's not a religious dance generally this dance can be seen in fairs celebrations okay then also you can see this butta bommalu dance as well. and there are different types of masks that puppets can be seen for example if they want to convey any kind of uh, religious information so they used to make these puppets in the form of like uh, in the shape of rama lakshmana or you can say anjaneya so they used to make different puppets and again they are going to perform the dance according to the music as well so that is your butta bommalu next one is uh, tappeta gullu there is a dance called as tappeta gullu so what is this tappeta gullu if you see this particular dance mainly you can see this dance in the districts of srikakulam and vijayanagaram district of andhra pradesh generally the yadavas so they were they are praying for the rain god in telugu we use the word called as gangamma okay, they are for praying for gangamma mainly for the rain dance so in this these people used to around 15 to 20 dancers mainly you can see the male of people are participating in this dance and they are going to perform this dance in the form of a group as well. so initially it was this dance was evolved as a yadavas dance and later this particular dance was spread across the society as well so you can see this dance that is mainly asking the rain god gangamma to invoke her to have a very good rains 
for the bumper or wrist as well. Next one is called as Kolatam. See, Kolatam is the dance very, very similar to the Garba dance in Gujarat. It is a stick dance. You can see these women are holding the sticks as well. You can see these sticks they are holding. So generally, this is a kind of religious dance, mainly performed during festivals. So the entire woman forms into two rings, inner ring and outer ring. So when the people are moving from the inner ring to outer ring, at the same time, people coming from outer ring to inner ring, they are going to strike the sticks. So you, could, uh, you can see people here, here as well. So whenever they are moving opposite, so inner uh, line or inner circle is moving to outer circle. Similarly, outer circle people are coming to inner circle. So in between, they are going to hit the sticks. So that kind of collatum, that's the forms one rhythm. So there is a collatum dance can be seen. Obviously, you can see this dance during festive season in festivals. Next one is called as Vilans, uh, Vilasini Natyam. See, Vilan, uh, it is Vilasini Natyam is not performing right now in Andhra Pradesh, because this dance used to be performed by the Devadasis. So who are Devadasis? So in the regions like Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, there are certain women that are dedicated to the temple. So these women, they has to learn the dance mainly to invoke the God and Goddesses. So these Devadasis not only used to perform in temple, but also they used to perform in the courts of various kings. Or at the same time, they used to perform in the public gatherings as well. Okay, so this is your Villa Villasini Natyam. So now, now also you can see this. These people who dance this particular Natyam, they are called as Devadasis. They are also called as Boginis. Okay, so, so some people we, we in uh, Andhra and Telangana also they called as a Bogini dance as well. So this dance can be seen. But nowadays, yeah, because there are no Devadasi system right now. So this dance is also not performing right now. But yeah, this dance was there. Next one is called as Dappu. So these people who are holding this musical instrument, that is called as Dappu. So this Dappu is made up of a neem wood. Neem wood. Now, once they made this neem wood into the circular fashion, and they use either the buffalo skin or the goat skin, to make this particular drum. So this center is the buffalo skin or the goat skin. So now you can say that the skin tanners, so they used to perform this particular dance that is called as the poo dance. Because particularly this dance, you can see this particular, this instrument that is dappu, that's whatever I said, this is the instrument. The dappu is very, very famous in Madhika community in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Actually, initially, because these people, Madhika communities, they are untouchables in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana before they are not, never allowed to come and contact into the people in the villages. So again, for their uh, excitement and for their entertainment, for their happiness, they have their own this dappu. And that is the reason you can see the, this dappu becomes a symbol of Madhika community movement also in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. But later what happened, this music became so famous. Now this dappu will present in each and every ritual in Andhra Pradesh. For example, some kind of procession is going on on the roads. Again, we, we need dappu. Now you can see Ganesh Nimajanam is going on. You require Dappu. This way are very much famous. Some kind of marriage is going on. Some kind of festivals is going on. Or some kind of ritual is going on. Or any kind of activity is going on. So now this Dappu became the part and parcel of the society in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana as well. Right? It started with Madhya community, but later it spreads across the uh, India, uh, Andhra and Telangana society as well. And this Dappu is very, very important, mainly to perform the Telugu rural art. Okay, there are various types of beads. You can see there are two sticks they will use in this. One is the thick stick, other one is the thin stick. So you'll have different types of sounds. So they, okay, it's, it's, it's create a vibe, okay? And you can see Janapada Kalalu. This, is, this comes under the Janapada Kalalu, that is a Telugu rural art task. So this Dappu is the part and parcel of uh, uh, AP and Telangana culture as well. Okay, this is the instrument, very, very, very important. Next one is called as Gobbi dance in Telugu we call it as Gobbemma. So when the festival, see during the Sankranti festival, see Sankranti festival is the main festival in Andhra Pradesh. Okay, Sankranti festival is the main festival in Andhra Pradesh. So actually, you know, the Sankranti festival will go for three days. Generally, the people in Andhra Pradesh, early morning, four o'clock, they will wake up, they will clean the houses in front. And they are going to make these designs in front of the house. You can see they are called as Rangavallis. So once they make this Rangavallis, um, inside they are going to keep this cow dung with flower on that. That is called as Gobbemma. 
so now these women they used to move around that particular gobram man they are going to perform a dance so in this you can see various flavors they will keep they will keep go that gobram man that is called as cow dung or dung you can talk cow dung i can say that you can see rangavalis with various colors so obviously this is performed during a festival and sagranti is the harvest festival in uh, andhra pradesh as well so they are going to use cow dung balls that is called as gobillu and they are going to use flowers turmeric and kumkum they are going to put on this particular um, gobillu or gobamma and once they kept that again all the women they used to move around this particular gobamma and they used to perform the dance as well and that is called as gobbi dance which is a part and parcel of uh, telugu culture as well so these are the various dances important uh, dances both classical dances uh, classical dances and the uh, folk dances new mother kuchipudi dance classical dance then followed by bama kalapam burra katha the name katha means story again burra means you can see the musical instrument that these people are having other one is called as veeranatyam so remember the word veerabhadra veerabhadra means shiva so again to appease the lord shiva these people used to perform the dance dimsa dance tribal dance arku valley butta bommal so remember the word butta and remember the bomma so again mainly you can see they are going to make the puppets which are bigger in size so these puppets people enter into the puppets and they'll perform various dances and tapete gullu you can see this tapete gullu was mainly the shepherds i said the shepherds used to perform this dance mainly to appease the gangamma other one is kolatam again similar to i said in garba in gujarat stick dance vilasini natyam in the dance performed by the devadasis right now it is not there in andhra and again dappu so i said that the history of dappu also very very famous madhya community and all remember that story then you can remember that and finally gobbi ma or gobbillu or gobbi dance during the sankranti as thank you very much in the next video we are going to come with other states as well so it's a series thank you very much